Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, oh. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Jorbs. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry, was that a bit loud? Watch it again and turn it up. Uh, <laughs> Slay the Spire 2 has been released. It is April 10th, uh, 2024. And uh, this game that I have played for 9,000 hours has just uh, just announced its sequel. I um, knew that Megacrit had been working on something. I genuinely didn't think it was Slay the Spire 2. Uh, I know Casey and Anthony, uh, they have played games with me and stuff like that. They're both very good strategy gamers and very wily. <laughs> they didn't give anything away. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, this is hype. This is hype. And uh, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what we know so far and what to look forward to and like some of my brief thoughts about Slay the Spire and what Slay the Spire has meant and what we can expect from Slay the Spire 2. Uh, slide number one. Yo, whoa, yo, who boy, wow, ye howdy, flabagoo. This should be a um, sorry, that shouldn't be spell checked. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am Jorbs. I have been a content creator for like eight years doing indie strategy games, and Slay the Spire has been the game that I have played most in the last five years. So the Spire released uh, in early access late 2018, and I started playing it early 2019, and I have now played over 9,000 hours of the game, which is a lot of hours. I will probably be at 10,000 hours by the time that Slay the Spire 2 releases, which will be quite an achievement. Um, and just the announcement has like reframed how I'm thinking about Slay the Spire, honestly. I'm starting to think about like which achievements do I want to like get done before Slay the Spire 2 comes out kind of thing. Like my entire mindset has had a paradigm shift. Is there something in Slay the Spire that I haven't done yet that I'd like to try to push myself to? 10 wins in a day. Uh, a Watcher World record. Uh, I don't know. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah, what is Slay the Spire? Uh, it's one of the most successful indie games of all time. And... It matters that it's successful in, in two ways. The first is like a lot of people are going to be really hyped about Slay the Spire 2, obviously, uh, because it's it's following in the footsteps of Slay the Spire and also it's made by the same people who made Slay the Spire and also it has the same name as Slay the Spire. Awesome. Uh, that's really cool. But also in terms of like this world that we live in, the economies and pressures on human beings and things like that, um, if indie devs have a game that is very successful it means that they have money to like hire people to support them and help them code and make sweet art and make awesome production value videos and stuff like that so that their next game can be even better uh, a lot of indie studios these days are um run on investments from backers which means that they don't necessarily have um enough agency to say things like, hey, no, we're not going to put microtransactions in this game, or hey, no, we actually need another six months right now. Uh, Megacrit hasn't been under those pressures. Uh, Casey and Anthony and their employees have been able to do things like switch the entire code base off of Unity because they got upset with Unity and didn't feel like Unity was going to do a good job of supporting Slay the Spire 2. So they actually just made the call to be like, nah, actually we're going to rewrite it all in Godot. Um, that was a thing that they did toward the end of last year. So, so 
I am expecting the fact that the Slay the Spire was successful to, one, mean that lots of people will be excited about Slay the Spire 2, but also, two, mean that Slay the Spire 2 gets to be the best version of Slay the Spire 2 imaginable. Um, I think Casey and Anthony have done a really good job of prioritizing, like, how can we make this game well? Uh, they did that in Slay the Spire, and from what I have seen, uh, Slay the Spire 2 looks like it is going to be more of that so that's very exciting for me i love it when a game is deliberately made well uh, and when people have the time and money to do a good job of that uh so this buyer spawned an entire genre of spire likes which uh is pretty incredible and means that nowadays when it releases there are going to be other things to compare it to when slay the spire released it was like this is kind of like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, but single player, I guess. Uh, nowadays, when Slay the Spire 2 releases, we're going to be like, well, Hearthstone has the mode of it that's single player, uh, like Spire, and also there are 500 games that are like Spire that have come out recently, and so on and so forth. And so that is going to be a thing to look at contextually with how the game works. Pausing. I don't know how to pause. Uh, I am a terrible content creator. Uh, I'm going to look real quick. No, I'm not going to find it. There were 1,300, I believe, roguelikes released last year compared to like 300 in 2019 or 2020 when Slay the Spire came out. And a huge part of that was the success of Slay the Spire, um, making people make roguelikes. A huge number of those roguelikes are very much like Slay the Spire or are very inspired by elements of Slay the Spire. So Slay the Spire 2 is releasing into a genre of games which its predecessor created largely uh, and which is thriving. And and that's really exciting. It'll be really, really exciting to see what it looks like for Slay the Spire 2 to release into that landscape instead of releasing into a world where there really wasn't a game like Slay the Spire yet. Uh, and people didn't necessarily uh, know what to expect with it or know what to do with it, etc. Uh, Slay the Spire is also a game by Casey and Anthony, who I have mentioned briefly. Uh, we all live in Seattle, Casey, Anthony, and I, uh, Seattle area, and so I've gotten to meet them and play board games with them and stuff like that before, and they are just both incredible human beings, <laughs> They are so humble, they are so smart, they are so thoughtful, they are so dedicated to games and playing games and making games well. And yes, I'm very, very excited <laughs> about any game that they ever make. And I'm going to be especially excited about Slay the Spire too, because Slay the Spire. Um, but yeah, Anthony's a genius. He's been playing and breaking strategy games his entire life. And he has a unique affinity for creating interesting and challenging game balance. You can find all sorts of um, interviews, podcasts that he has done talking about how they balance Slay the Spire. They took a data-driven approach where they were collecting all of the runs that people were playing and they were looking at how the cards were getting used and what their win rates were like and stuff like this and tweaking the game to make it interesting to play for their player base. And like Slay the Spire stands out as a game that kind of introduced almost the idea of doing that and did it incredibly incredibly well anthony is not the first person who has ever had the idea to do that or the first person who has ever done that but he is to me the first person who has done that with the result that i've played the game and thought oh this is really fun to play so for me at least uh he's kind of a pioneer there uh and then casey casey has said he doesn't even like card games uh <laughs> A few times um so i find it very funny and a little sad for casey that he not only made slay the spire largely as like a throwaway project with anthony it's not not the only like slay the spire and slay the spire 2 are not the only games that they have made together they've like worked on maybe 50 projects together at this point or something like that most of which have never seen the light of day because this is how game development works um but uh, he has not only had Slay the Spire be a kind of throwaway thing that he worked on, and then boom, all of a sudden it's picking up attention, boom, it's huge, boom. It's five years of his life working to support it and release patches for it and get it released on Switch and Mac and all the other things. Oh, it's on mobile now, right? It's like in the Apple Store, that too. Um, 
so he he did that for like five years of his life. <laughs> then I thought, I thought he was getting to work on something different that wasn't a card game, so he could have some time off from card games. But apparently, he has been working on Slither's Fire Two in secret. So uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I, uh, he does just really like making games, so I I think he's doing okay. But yeah. Uh, so this Fire is also a game that I've played for over 9,000 hours. So for me, this announcement of Slow the Spire 2 is like a life-defining thing. Uh, it is a really big deal. I am hoping that Slow the Spire 2 will be a really, really awesome game. It seems like it is following in the footsteps of Slow the Spire, but making it better, which is uh, very compelling to me. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Uh... I think I talked briefly about how it matters that Spire was successful already. Um, how can I see and Anthony have been able to grow Megacrit in a way that they want with their own money, with their own artistic vision? Uh, yeah, okay. But I had a slide here. Um, what hurdles might Slay the Spire 2 face? I thought this was an important thing to talk about. One, unrealistic expectations. That's on you. You. Don't ruin it. Um, Slay the Spire 2 cannot possibly recapture the feeling of playing Slay the Spire 1 for the first time. Because when a lot of us played Slay the Spire for the first time, it was the first time we had ever played a game like Slay the Spire. Or it was the first time we had ever played a game like Slay the Spire that was done well, perhaps. Um, since then, like hundreds or even thousands of games have come out that are in the spirit of Slay the Spire, and many of them are very good. And we have played tons of these at this point. We're not going to ever have the feeling of playing Slay the Spire for the first time again, and we can't expect Slay the Spire 2 to provide that. It is a sequel. It has two in the name. Um, but it'll be really good. <laughs> so so, so I don't expect it to like be like playing Slay the Spire again for the first time, but I do expect it to be very, very good, and I am very excited about that. Uh, there are lots of other hurdles the game could face but I just kind of feel like DC and Anthony have it covered. So I just, yeah. Nah. Nah, they got this. Let me get some screenshots on, screenshots up on screen for you of what the game actually looks like. These are taken from the game's Steam store page where you can go and wish list it and get hyped about it and link all of your friends, so on and so forth. The game looks a lot like Slay the Spire. <laughs> Look at this bird. I think this bird's name is Gertrude. The bird gives Gertrude vibes. Um, there are six screenshots here, and I'm going to talk about all six of them, and I'm going to give you the things that stand out to me as somebody who has played over 9,000 hours of Slay the Spire. Screenshot one. Boom. Uh, first of all, I want to say, like, the game's not releasing for another year, and that'll be into early access, so there's a huge amount of stuff that can easily change. Entire enemies could be removed or created. Cards can be removed and created. Numbers on cards can absolutely change. Interface elements can change. Um, an entire extra act could be added to the game between now and then. Like, there's, there's huge amounts of development time still for this game so you can't look at a screenshot like this and think like oh this is what the game will be like at the end of it all um uh thoughts looking at this though one uh we have a very similar interface to slay the spire and we are also looking at ghostly armor which is a card from slay the spire and i think this is good <laughs> uh i think that slay the spire did the interface right and also built a lot of cards that are just the right card um and a lot of the time when you play a game like slay the spire you'll play through it and like the interface will just kind of be wrong <laughs> and the systems in the game will just kind of be wrong and the cards in the game will just like not quite work and so <laughs> there's no reason to like get rid of all of the stuff that was done well in Slay the Spire in order to make Slay the Spire too well, and I am glad that they are not trying to do that. We are looking at Ironclad. Ironclad has a slightly different stance. He's gotten a bit of a glow up, and uh, we are looking at a ghostly armor. There's also a cleave in there. I love the art on cleave. There's also Shrug It Off. Uh, these three are all cards that we know 
from Ironclad in Slay Spire 1. But we've got a couple of new cards there as well. Molten Fist and Hellraiser are not cards that I have seen before. We also have um, some buffs on our bird friend here. I don't know what minus four sword is, but it's something and there's a flag. I mean, this is just not, not a huge deal. Some potions, we're on floor six, fighting a 79 health enemy. That is a hefty enemy for floor six. We have some relics. We have a portrait of Ironclad. Yeah, that's, it's basically Slay the Spire. It looks a lot like Slay the Spire. Here's what Silent looks like now. This is on floor 36, so it's probably like the beginning of Act 3 if the act structure is similar. I don't know if it is or not. Let's see Snekawai Silent Run. Interesting that we made it to floor 36 with only three relics. Maybe relics are done differently. I don't know. Um, there isn't quite as much to talk about with this one because we don't have any cards in our hand. But yeah, same sort of idea, except with Silent instead of Ironclad. We have the Necro Binder, as I believe it's three characters right now, Ironclad, Silent, and a Necro Binder. Uh, and my assumption is that the game will release into early access next year, uh, and we'll have more content made for it between now and then. And in the early access process, there will also be more stuff uh, made for the game. But this is what we have spoiled so far. The Necro Binder looks pretty sweet. Uh, noteworthy to me is that we are starting with 35 max HP. Uh, one of the mod characters... <laughs> so I, I tried my hand at Slay the Spire modding. I tried to make a trilogy and I made one and a half characters. The first one I'm like pretty happy with. The second one we got about halfway through. But the second one was Cole. It was an undead character which wandered around the Spire collecting souls basically and started with very low health. Low health in Slay the Spire is associated with the undead, uh, apparitions for ghosts, bites for vampires, and now the Necrobinder has 50% of uh, regular characters starting health. So that's kind of interesting. Wandering Lich who seeks to bind the Forgotten Corpse. I don't know what the Forgotten Corpse is. Calls upon her trusty left hand, Osti, in combat. So, that's cool. I hope that we have um, some uh, Gideon the Ninth vibes going on in this Necrobinder character because, uh, uh, yeah, the skeleton, skeleton ladies are pretty rad these days. This is a shop. Uh, is the rug for sale? Looks like no. The silent is here. That is a pretty cool depiction of the silent. A lot of these characters, like, you haven't seen them depicted in very many ways, so seeing a new look on them Pretty cool. You're on floor 12 and we do have four relics. So we're not like limited to three relics or whatever. I wonder if that potion is a thorns potion. Kind of looks like it's a thorns potion. Uh, Niao is here. Looking, I would say, kind of intimidating. I always kind of wondered if there's going to be some Slay the Spire content where you get to fight the whale. Um, downfall kind of approached that concept, but Downfall was a mod. We'll see what Slay the Spire 2 does with it, but yeah, that's a, that's an awesome picture of Niao. And here's an event. This is a new event, Symbiote. Along your travels, you stumble upon a dark, amorphous polyp. You can sense that it is very old and very evil, and you can approach. You lose 6 HP and enchant an attack with Corrupted. I don't know what that is. Uh, we could imagine that it could be all sorts of things. I, I don't I don't know what it is though. Or we can kill it with fire, which removes a random card from your deck. Uh the idea of removing random cards from your deck is really cool to me. I think it's good design, personally. Um the thing that I like most about it is that Slay the Spire in its least interesting balance states, in my opinion, has been heavily about uh, creating infinites and there are lots of runs still where you will end up winning with an infinite deck toward the end of the run and you just kind of play the same combination of like somewhere between three and six cards you just kind of know this character's card pool can go infinite with these sorts of options and you find some of those options and go infinite and with like 
ironclad or defect, they can actually recycle or exhaust to their cards. And so you can start off a fight with 30 cards in your deck and then be infinite by the end of the fight, uh, playing just like two or three cards over and over again. And with Silent and Watcher, they have so much energy generation and card draw that they can also pretty easily go infinite and slay the Spire. Um, but removing a random card from your deck benefits decks with lots of cards which haven't prioritized removing their basic starter cards. So that implies to me that maybe there's a little bit of a balance push toward making big piles of cards that are not quite as sleek and finely tuned, which I think is a lot more fun to play. So I'm excited by that concept. And if you don't want to remove a random card, you can lose 6 HP and enchant an attack with Corrupted, whatever that means. So yeah, let's slow the Spire too. so far. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Uh, there isn't tons yet. Go check out the store page. Uh, I'm sure there will be more coming and then a game releasing sometime in 2025 into early access. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. <laughs> let me know if you would like to see anything in particular from me about Slay the Spire or my thoughts on Slay the Spire too as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. See ya.